Broadcasting across California, you're watching The Issue Is. And welcome to The Issue Is. I'm Alex Michelson. Sometimes we say we've got an all-star panel. This week, we've really got an all-star panel. Debate issues like abortion, January 6th, Governor Newsom, and more. With us, on the left, our most frequent guest, Gloria Allred, who's been involved with more high-profile cases than perhaps any other person alive. And on the right, nationally syndicated radio host and columnist and author Larry Elder, who's got like seven jobs right now. In 2021, <laughs> he finished first in the recall election uh, amongst Governor Gavin Newsom's challengers. Right. Welcome to you both. Gloria, you were on last week. We've, I don't think we've ever had anybody on two weeks in a row. But Larry, when we booked you, you said you wanted to be on with Gloria. Absolutely. You guys have a very special relationship. I've known Gloria probably almost 30 years, mm -hmm. and this may take a lot of the steam out of the show, but I've always adored her. Um, she and I used to be on the same station. She'd be on for two hours. I would drive in. I was on the two hours after her. She'd say something that would tick me off. I come in and I <laughs> confront her, and she says, "Let's do it on the air." So we take it on the air. Uh, Gloria is a wonderful person. She's funny. Uh, she's got a risque sense of humor. Put a camera on her, she becomes Cujo. So I, <laughs> and you guys have nicknames for each other, right? I call her Super Glow. And you call him? The Sage from South Central. There, he is. there we go. All right, well, you ready to, to go at it again? I know Let's it's been a few it. years since you guys have Let's done this. Do Let's it. begin with the big issue of abortion rights. President Biden signing an executive order at week's end. We've got some video of that. The country is still coming to terms with the Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade and returning the abortion question to the states. About half the country now looking to ban abortion. California looking to expand abortion rights. Larry, uh, did the court get it right? Yeah, well, the court got it wrong in 1973 when they took up the case in the first place. And as you pointed out, all it does is return it to the states where it should have been in the first place. And a lot of people have said the Supreme Court has now outlawed abortion. They've done no such thing. Again, they've returned to the states the way it was for all but 50 years of our nation's history. And some of the biggest protests have taken place in New York, Chicago, and L.A., where it's zero chance that the local legislators are now going to change the law and make abortion rights more restrictive. And I also take issue with people like Gavin Newsom who claim that this is all about men exerting power over women. Depending upon the polls and how they phrase them, a greater percentage of women are pro-life than even men. So it's nonsense to say this is about men controlling the lives of women. Gloria, I know you disagree with that. Absolutely, I do, Alex. I'm shocked. <laughs> Larry, you know, it is about the United States Supreme Court uh, throwing out precedent, throwing out super precedent, but it's also about controlling the lives of women. It's about coercing women who become pregnant and requiring them to take that pregnancy to term, even if there are health risks, even if they are victims of rape or incest. What about that 10-year-old child recently who became pregnant and couldn't get a legal abortion now in Ohio because of the Supreme Court ruling and the law in Ohio that was passed and had to travel to Indiana to get a, a, a legal abortion soon in Indiana. It may not even be legal to get an abortion. This is outrageous. Women cannot enjoy full equality and liberty because of this U.S. Supreme Court decision making, well, giving states the right to make abortion Perhaps a crime or illegal. You, you just misstated the law. You said even if there are health risks. Uh, even the Catholic Church recognizes abortion in the event that a woman's life uh, is, is in peril. So that's just not true. Well, that, and, but and, the and, Supreme and, Court does not recognize it because they, from the moment of fertilization, this recent U.S. Supreme Court decision in Dobbs versus Jackson means that a state can pass a law that even if it would endanger the life of a woman to get an abortion... A state can outlaw abortion, you, even in that case. You, you've misstated the law. There no, is there is, exactly there is no it. state that requires an abortion if the woman's life is at risk. Not a single one. It will never happen. Uh, and this and this Dobbs decision said that beyond 15 weeks, an abortion is illegal. That is uh, uh, more restrictive than in Italy, than in France, uh, countries we often look to for uh, our, our how we ought to model ourselves. The Supreme Court federalized an issue that they never should have touched, and now it's just gone back to the states where it should Gloria, have gone before. Gloria, why, why shouldn't it be a state's rights issue? Because obviously the views in a place like California are very different than a place like Mississippi. Well, I mean, should contraception be a state's rights issue? Should marriage equality be a state's rights issue? And, and should it be a national law 
that prohibits abortion in every state. That's what Mitch McConnell wants to do. That's what many Republicans want to do. And no, I don't. It should be a right and not subject to a state interfering with the right of a woman to control her own body. I don't, know, I don't know any Republican who wants a federal law that says uh, that says abortion should be illegal. I don't know anyone who wants one. Well, and you, and you all, and you McConnell also, has advocated for that. Mike right. Pence has said that that should be, be yes. something. And, and you also talked about this being a super, super precedent. So what? Uh, Dred Scott was precedent. Plessy B. Ferguson was precedent. So, Cases so, are wrong, and when they're wrong, they need to be overturned. Do you disagree, then, with an idea of a national abortion law passed I do, by Congress? I do disagree with that. It should be a state-by-state -state issue. And if, and, if, and if you guys want to codify uh, Roe v. Wade, you should, you should do it the right way, which is to push for an amendment to the Constitution. And people on the right who want to codify outlawing abortion should do the same thing. You uh, think short, that 10-year-old should have been forced to take that pregnancy to term? I do. Even though I, I believe, she's obviously a victim of rape... A ten-year-old cannot consent to It's still, it's still an sex. innocent life, and that's and that's the distinction. Oh, this is if, if I if I, be, if, I if I believe that this is an innocent life and you don't, we're never going to come to an agreement, and so that's why it should be fought state by state. Somebody that's gotten a lot of attention after this is Justice Clarence Thomas. Yes. Um, he suggested um, that the right to privacy, which was at the core of the right to abortion, shouldn't also be in place for things like marriage equality or contraceptives. Larry, I know you have a, an issue with how the media has been treating Justice Thomas it, and It's, all it's been hideous. He's been referred to as an Uncle Tom by Benny Thompson, the head of the January 6th uh, committee. Uh, he's been called an Uncle Tom by Joy Reid of MSNB Hee Haw. He's been called Uncle Tom by <laughs> Samuel Jackson. It's outrageous. You can disagree with somebody without making a racist slur like that. Uh, I think it's unfair what, he, what he's been, been called. Look, I like Clarence Thomas. I, I think he's a superstar and more and more clout uh, in the Supreme Court is going to Clarence Thomas. And, and he's right. There are a lot of precedents we ought to, we ought to rethink, including especially the one uh, that allowed race-based preferences uh, that uh, Justice Sandra Day O'Connor signed. Do you think, to. though, that, that same-sex marriage should be overturned? I think that that should be an issue, a state-by-state -state issue, just as well as this should be an issue, state-by-state okay, well, state issue. what about... Interracial. Don't, don't give me that. That's based on the. I haven't said Amendment. anything. What That's about? Uh, let me say. <laughs> it's it's a red herring. Yeah. What about? It's a black in, herring. What about? <laughs> African American herring. <laughs> what about interracial marriage? What I about? notice that Justice Thomas did not mention that. Because did not mention. Did not yeah. mention the U.S. Supreme Court decision of Loving versus Virginia. He's in an interracial marriage. Yeah, Perhaps so that's the reason he didn't mention it. But that is also based on a Gloria, right, Gloria. a fundamental right to marry. And that is a constitutional right and the right and, and also rooted in liberty in the 14th no, no, Amendment. It's rooted yeah. in the 14th Amendment, which Roe v. Wade was not. Roe, Roe v. Wade it was. No, it wasn't. What's, it it what? was rooted in, in, a, in a right to privacy, which does not exist in the Constitution. I've read it a few times. It's not there. The 14th Amendment is there. For you to act as if this now means they're going to rethink uh, uh, interracial marriage is nonsense. Furthermore, as you pointed out, he's in an interracial marriage. He's going to pass, a, he's going to sign a, a, a decision that says my marriage is illegitimate. Doesn't but, even make any sense. Exactly. And that's the point. He can't get pregnant, and therefore he doesn't seem to have any. I thought men could get pregnant. He doesn't well, have now, any. Now all of a sudden they can't get pregnant for anymore. For women and the life-changing impact Just a few of weeks this if you, decision if you, on their if lives. If you think that interracial marriages are protected by the Constitution, the four, by the 14th Amendment, why are same-sex marriages not protected by that as well? It is that should be done on a state-by-state -state basis. What's the difference? There, there are maybe 18 or so. Uh, items in the Constitution, Article 1, Section 8, that's the province of the federal government. Uh, and and same-sex marriage is not one of them. Abortion is not one of them. Those kinds of things should be left to the people and to the states. Up next, though, more with Larry and Gloria. We're going to talk about one of your favorite topics, Larry, Gavin Newsom. <laughs> but we go Who? to break Who? with one of your favorite songs, Gloria. This is a chance, of course, for you to dance, show off your move. Here's a clip from one of Larry's favorite movies, Seeing All Red on Netflix. <laughs> We'll be right back. Take it away, Gloria and the Dancing Drag Queens. <laughs> Gloria. I urge all of you living in Florida to join the fight or join us in California. So that's the ad that the California governor, Gavin Newsom's campaign, spent about $100,000 to air on the 4th of July in Florida. It got more than 3 million views on Twitter, a lot of free national publicity. 
for a guy who insists that he has no interest whatsoever in running for president at all. Sub-zero interest. <laughs> and yet he's running ads in Florida. Back with our panel, Gloria Allred and Larry Elder. Of course, Larry, you ran in the recall election last year. Um, this week, one of the big stories was that the governor was on vacation, a family vacation in Montana. It's a special state for the Newsoms. They got married at a ranch owned by Jennifer's parents there. They even named their first daughter Montana Newsom. Yet some of the governor's critics are blasting him for that trip. California currently bans state employees from traveling to Montana for official business due to what the state says are Montana's policies towards LGBTQ people. Right. Newsom's team won't discuss whether he brought with him a taxpayer-funded security detail. They're sort of suggesting right. that he did. Mm -hmm. uh, Gloria, d do you care about this? you think too much is being made about this, uh, this whole thing? I think it's a fair issue, but what is more important is what the governor's stands are and the policies that affect us in California. And I'm fine with his going to, uh, well, his running ads in Florida as well. Florida, you know, which doesn't want uh, young children to be able to say gay or discuss gay in their classrooms. And, and that's why in the Pride Parade, right, here in West Hollywood last month, uh, I had a car that said, in L.A., we say gay. In L.A., oh, we say Christ. gay. And it had a photo <laughs> of the state of Florida, and everybody got it. I, I, I guess Larry probably wasn't at that parade with you. Uh, I, I don't what, think I was what, there. I, was, I wasn't take? invited. My invitation got lost what, in the mail. What's your take on the Montana trip? Well, none dare call it hypocrisy, even though that's exactly what it is. He does not allow uh, California officials to travel there on state business. This wasn't state business, I'll give you that. But one would think if the state is so uh, repulsive because of their, uh, their laws on abortion, uh, he wouldn't spend time there. This is just as hypocritical as him being in that French laundry restaurant, uh, not wearing a mask, not engaging in social distancing with the very people that drafted the mandates that he was violating. He's a hypocrite. I'm getting flashbacks to the recall campaign. I feel like we're back at it again. Uh, so Where I was called think, the black face of white do, supremacy do, by do, the LA there Times. There we go. Got it in. So yes. do, do, you, do you think, though, that maybe it's time to rethink these travel bans in the first place? That the whole idea of it is, seems like it's kind of a messaging thing, but in reality doesn't really make sense. Now, if somebody has a family member in a state that bans abortion and wants to visit them, I don't have any problem with that or even take a vacation there because their family is there. But come on, we don't want to put money into states that are going to put women and girls' lives at risk. Gloria, do you have any respect at all for people that feel differently? Any respect at all for people that feel that abortion is wrong, it's a sin? And for the women that feel that way, including Amy Coney Barrett, do you have any sympathy at all for people that feel that way? You know, what I'm concerned about are state laws coercing women into having to take pregnancies to full term, even if it's a risk to their health. We're way beyond the discussion of should we have choice well, or not have also, choice. We're also way beyond the, the Newsom discussion because now we're doing abortion again. Okay. But let's get <laughs> back, right, so, back to that. Newsom. Larry, uh, last time that you were on our show was right after you, you uh, the, the recall election. And you said that you weren't going to be running this year right. because essentially you thought that it was too difficult for a Republican to win in mm -hmm. this state given the fact that they're two to one Democrats in this state. Actually, three, it, three to one, you throw yeah. in the independents. So mm -hmm. Brian Dolly is the guy that's now running against Governor Newsom, state senator. Does 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 he have any shot? And and do you, are you, know, you going to be supporting? You him? know, before the show, Gloria and I were talking about Brian Dolly. She didn't even know who he was, and I didn't know who he was until he ran. He's got zero name recognition. He's got zero money. He's got zero shot. Okay. <laughs> he got 1.1 million <laughs> votes. He got 1.1 million votes in this uh, primary election. I got three point. Five million in the in the recall election, three times what he got. Uh, he's got no shot. Larry, the last time you were on, you suggested that you are not going to run for governor, but you might run for president. Any you, update on I think, that? I think, I think you said president, but uh, I, I said I might run for something else. Would you? Would uh, are, you, are, are there any thoughts about I'm, that? I'm looking at it. I've got a political action committee called Elder for America. We're looking to take back the House and the Senate, campaigning in favor of school choice, get rid of these soft on crime DAs. We got rid of Bodine. We're going to try and get rid of Gascon, uh, and we also want to campaign for. Uh, 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 strong families. Yeah. Well, and can so, I ask you a question and, and, and so, in your political career? Uh, are you interested in an endorsement from former President Trump? You know what? I did not seek an endorsement from him when I ran, but I was still called a Trump wannabe, Trump light. Uh, Gavin Newsom said I was more Trump well, than Trump, my, whatever that, that means. That didn't answer my question. I said, are you interested in an endorsement 
Well, if in I, the future, if, if I if I would if I would have run for president, I believe that Donald Trump is going to run for president. So I doubt that he'd endorse me, uh, his opponent. <laughs> but if he doesn't, and you do, would you be interested? Absolutely, in his... I would. I voted yeah. for him twice. I campaigned with him and for him. Yeah. Uh, I don't think of him as a hideous well, person the way a lot of other people oh, well, do. Well, no, well, gonna, Larry is just Trump like. I, I like. We're going to like, talk. I more. like his position on on immigration. He supported school choice. Uh. Best economy ever. He did the First Step Act that allowed uh, black uh, prisoners to rethink their... And what about their, January 6th? Well, let, well, well, let's talk about January 6th when we come back. At the some insurrection point, of January 6th. At some 6th. point, we have to take a commercial the break. The insurrection of January uh, 6th. So we're going to talk Ridiculous. about that. Who knows? Maybe it'll be Newsom versus Elder on the presidential stage <laughs> in 2024. That'd be something. We go to break with more music and an opportunity for each of you to dance. Well, this is some Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. Hopefully, we can make this loud here. This is Love the One You're With because the two of you, I think you love the one you're with right now. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Super low. Whoa. We'll be back. She's More than the is after this. Former White House counsel Pat Cipollone testifying to the January 6th committee behind closed doors this week. Next week, we're expecting two hearings, one on Tuesday, possible primetime hearing on Thursday. Back with our panel this week, our all-star panel, Larry Elder on the right, Gloria Allred on the left. Uh, Larry, have the hearings made you think differently at all about Donald Trump? No, they haven't. The purpose of the hearings is to bring down his poll numbers, hopefully to deter him from running again in 2024 uh, to get the nomination, and if he does, uh, to make him lose. That's the whole purpose of it. And, and, and in my opinion, it's having some effect. I'm finding a, number, a growing number of Republicans saying, you know, we like Donald Trump, but I don't think we want the baggage. They weren't saying that before these hearings. It's had that effect. But the idea that there was some sort of in insurrection that was orchestrated by Donald Trump is incredibly unfair. What part of, I want you to peacefully and patriotically march over to the Capitol building, don't you understand, which is what he said hours before these riots. And they were riots. And the people that did them should be punished to the fullest extent of the law. I don't know anybody that endorses this. But the idea that he ordered it, orchestrated it, led it, is absolute nonsense. Agree with that, Gloria? Uh, with all due respect, it's <laughs> absolute nonsense respect. to think that he didn't have a major role in all of this. He took, in it. he took hours, be, even after his daughter was asking him to please ask the riot, you know, the rioters, I want to call them the insurrectionists, to go home. He didn't. Why? Because he was pretty happy that they were down there. In fact, he had invited them to January 6th. He spoke to them on January 6th. He said he was going to go to the Capitol with them, which he didn't, but only because the Secret Service wouldn't drive him there. He wanted that those election results to be overturned. He wanted to stage, Alex, a coup to make sure that Biden did not become president. This is a man we have to know the full truth about, and we are going to learn more next week when there are more hearings for the January 6th committee. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, I will make a bet with you right now that he was not going to be indicted for insurrection. He's not going to be, despite what Adam Schiff said, saying he's incontrovertible ed evidence that he uh, committed insurrection, he will not be indicted because the evidence isn't there. Okay, well, here's the operative word. It's three letters, yet. In other words, the Department of Justice has not yet brought uh, 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 charges against Donald Trump. They may. They won't. Or they may not. They won't. But I know, well, you have a crystal ball we don't have. Uh, <laughs> I, and, have and, I have it in my and, trunk. And, I should have brought it in. I have one, it's a little bit foggy. So all I can say is you're right that the January 6th committee does not need to make a criminal referral. It's fine if they do. It's fine if they don't. But what matters is but, we are all can, entitled okay, to the can, truth. Can I, can I make a can, yes. can see Gloria's right? That Donald Trump thought the election was stolen, wanted it overturned, just as Democrats thought the election was stolen in 2000 and objected to electors, 2004 objected to electors, 2016 they objected to more states than Donald Trump did Some in 2020. Some did, but it was not at the same extent. You'll agree to that, right? I mean, well, Hillary I Clinton it, it, went to Donald Trump's inauguration, shook Hillary his Clinton, hand, Clinton did found, a concession she speech. Found, and she did not present well, didn't a use, slate of phony electors. She didn't, Either. she didn't use the C word concession, nor did Donald Trump use the C word. But Donald Trump is in Florida, and Joe Biden is in the White House. To act as if the Donald Trump was not going to leave is silly. <laughs> Back to where we started with this whole thing. Uh, you're still comfortable voting for Donald Trump if you don't run yourself. Uh, let's see. As opposed to Kamala Harris or, or <laughs> Joe Biden, 
Yes. Yes. And, the, and obviously. Emphatic yes. What about obviously, if I run? Three, three, three yes. letters. Three letters. Could, could, what if I could, could run, we Larry? Bring, could we bring three America letters. together and have the all red elder <laughs> ticket? Three, three letters, to, to quote my opponent, Y-E-S, yes. Okay. All right. Well, Yet was the word I We had. are going to be back with Larry and Gloria. And I want you to think about this. What is your favorite thing about each other? Uh, Larry, we're going to sh- talk about that when we come back. But okay. first, we go to break with more music. This is Smokey Robinson, You Really Got a Hold on Me, Great which I Smokey think is Robinson. also Whoa. synonymous for your relationship. You really got a hold on me. Yeah. yeah. Jam out. You ready to move? Come on, Larry. Welcome back to The Issue Is. We are with Gloria Allred and Larry Elder after one of our best debates ever here on The Issue Is. But what I love about this show is that it shows that people who disagree don't have to be disagreeable with each other, that they have respect for each other. I know the two of you have a lot of love for each other. What's your favorite thing about Larry, Gloria? Well, Larry, of course, is a great debater. He's wrong, but he's still (laughs) a great debater. Yeah. Larry, your favorite thing about Gloria? A couple of things. Gloria had a marvelous relationship with her father. You speak about him like he walks on water. That's how I felt about my father. We're both lawyers, both trial lawyers. Uh, Both of us had, uh, did radio shows. Both of us had TV shows. We played uh, uh, court TV judges. Uh, We have a lot in common. I just adore her. She's sweet. She's funny. She's personable. As I said before, I put a camera in front of her and she goes mad dog. I don't know why. I don't know why. But she's also a great dancer. And, you know, she started She thinks dancing. she's a great dancer. She, she is a great dancer. She Don't you ever dancer. insult yeah. Gloria's dance moves yeah. to me, okay? Uh, Gloria started the tradition of dancing on That's this right. show, which started back on week three of the show. Four years later, we're still dancing. But this is going to be the epic, because, Larry, you're one of the best dancers we've ever had on this show. Well, so now wow. we get to bring the two of you together to one of your favorite uh, groups, The Temptations. <laughs> so here we go. We're getting ready, and we're going to end with this. Let's see your guys' dance moves. Oh, yeah. See, she's she's leading. I'm leading. (laughs) Larry's not used to women leading. That's right. You gotta get used to it, Larry. This is the 2022. Lead, follow. Lead, follow. Or get get out of the way. way. (laughs) Lori Allred, Larry Elder, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you next week for more of the issue is. Thank <laughs> you.